The pileus, or cap, is the most iconic part of the mushroom. But where did this word come from? One day, Zeus was looking down from Olympus and noticed Leda, the Spartan king Tyndareus's wife, alone in a garden. Lusting for her, he descended down under the guise of a swan and seduced her. Out hatched Helen of Troy and Clytemnestra, as well as the Dioscuri, the brothers named Castor and Pollux. Two gleaming white eggshells lay upon the crowns of the boys, and many began to take the white cap as a symbol of liberation. This cap is known as the Pileus. But is the Pileus still around today? In Albania, the traditional piece of headwear for men is called the Kalish, or Plis. As you can see, the Plis is quite similar to the ancient Greek Pileus. But here in Albania, there are some caps made of cement, worn by the earth. During the 1960s, the communist leader Enver Hoxha constructed thousands of these concrete bunkers. While many sources say 173,000, some claim numbers as high as 750k. These bunkers were built from materials such as concrete, steel, iron, and stone and he had them built with an average of 5.7 bunkers per square kilometer. But why did he build them? Around the time of the Cold War, Hoxha believed that Albania was constantly under threat of invasion, and as we know from history, the best way to hold on to your power is to keep the country in turmoil. Rather than develop a professional military, Hoxha believed the people of Albania should be the ones to defend it, including women and children who were expected to defend the country from bunkers whenever an invasion occurred. Despite the tedious militarization of the entire country, an invasion never came. Today, these concrete mushrooms serve as painful reminders of a paranoia-fueled dictatorship. If I didn't know any better, and I actually thought that concrete bunkers were mushrooms, then I would probably describe their caps as being convex. A cap is said to be convex when it is smoothly rounded, almost like a hill or a mound, as if someone took a sphere and cut it in half. A great example of this shape is Strabilomyces flacopus, the old man of the woods. This is also the shape of the northern Albanian version of the police hat. But if you go towards the center of Albania, you might notice that the pleece is conical, or cone-shaped. Mushroom caps can also be conical. In fact, there's an entire genus of mushrooms called the conocybe family, whose poster child is conocybe tenera. One thing to remember about cap shapes is that they often change over time. Take the deadly poisonous Amanita verosa, justifiably named Destroying Angel. At first, the cap is conical, but then it becomes more bell-shaped, or campanulate. If you're a gardener, you might already know this word if you've ever planted a campanula, or the bellflower. Moving on, we also have the depressed cap. No, not that one. This one. When a cap is depressed, it usually has a dent in it. Sometimes it gets so depressed that the sides flare up. A great example of a depressed cap is the candy cap, a mushroom highly valued for its delicious smell. Of course, if the cap is just flat, just call it flat. Easy? Don't get too excited yet. Next up, we have infundibuliform. In, eh, infundibuliform. While infundibuliform takes a bit of practice to say, you should use it when you see a cap in the shape of a funnel or a trumpet, such as when you see the delicious chanterelle. This next one is a bit weird, but I promise you it will make sense. Think back to when you were born. Remember when you were attached to your mom? Neither do I. But we are attached to our moms through a tube-like structure that feeds us, the umbilical cord. So naturally, when you see a cap that looks like it has an any belly button on it, call it umbilicate. Vikings are cool, especially their shields. 
Have you ever wondered what that round thing is called? That thing is called an umbo. So if you see a mushroom cap that looks like a viking shield, just call it umbonate. And if you're interested in tongues, then you might remember the word for those little bumps, papillae. We have some on our bodies too, nipples. But truth be told, some mushrooms can have nipples too. Just take a look at Macrolepiota procara, the parasol mushroom. So if you see that a mushroom cap has a sharper than normal umbo, just call it papillate. Before this meeting is adjourned, let's stop by the court of the Coprinus comatus, the shaggy mane, or sometimes called the lawyer's wig. This kind of cap would be called cylindrical. So, there you have it. Pretty much every different cap shape you'll encounter in the field. Unless you discover a new species, of course. In that case, you get to choose the word. Just please choose one that's easier to say than infundibiliform. Thanks for watching.